Keith, as a non-materialist, somebody who believes in the fundamental nature of consciousness, that consciousness is not only what the brain delivers, how do you explain it? If consciousness has something other than the brain, what's the stuff? If you ask the question, uh, what's, what is consciousness made out of? What stuff is it made out of? I think you're presupposing that materialism is true. There has to be some stuff that it's made out of. Materialists like Dan Dennett uh, talk about spooky stuff, very thin stuff. You know. <laughs> uh, but it's not stuff at all, of course. Stuff, I suppose, is something you locate in space uh, and that has solidity, so you might define it in various ways. But consciousness is not in space and it doesn't have solidity, so it's not made of stuff. Consciousness is uh, spiritual, as you know, to use the word which will raise everyone's hackles, perhaps. But that is to say, it's not. It is not material. So anything which is not material is not made of stuff. Is it a substance? Substance is another word with a long philosophical his history. I, I think that you. Is it a mirage? Is it a, is a metaphor? Is it more? Is, is oh no, it's not a metaphor. Consciousness okay. is not really real. It's, it's, it's real. It, it, yeah. it's, it's something real. It, it's more than metaphor. Yeah. It's not stuff if you define stuff as occupying space and time. Right. Okay, my kind of stuff is actually broader than space and time. My kind of stuff is anything right. that's, that's, that's real. Okay, well, in that case, uh, it is real. But the content of consciousness are things like thoughts, sense perceptions, uh, sights, sounds, feels, sure. etc. Uh, feelings. Um, all of these things I can get things. from my brain. No, you can't. <laughs> No, that's you're presupposing materialism if you say that. I mean, all you say is, if my brain works in certain ways, then these things occur in consciousness. That's a correlation. You, you yes, know, you're getting them from your brain. Right, 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 right. Um, now, of course, I'm not wanting to deny that, that, in fact, most of our experiences are channeled through the brain. That is to say, the right. brain has a causal role in producing them. But I am wanting to say that the brain itself uh, produces something that is not material. Right? Okay. H how does that happen? Does the brain itself produce something that's not material, or is there something material coming from outside the brain that sort of combines with the brain? But again, terms like outside. I mean, the difficulty here is in speak is, is just to see that material terms are not going to apply to consciousness. So you're not get, people okay. talk about consciousness being in the brain or in the head. Because right. It's not uh, in uh, anywhere. Okay, fair enough. I accept that. Yeah. Well, I think I, I think it just is the case that our brain works and we speak. Right? But if you say are those uh, just uh, waves, sound waves in the air produced by purely physical organs? Well, they're partly that. But when you understand the words that you say, that's not a physical process any longer. So there's something physical which mediates information and understanding. You are calling consciousness spiritual. Yeah. Um, I don't find that uh, um, particularly pejorative, but I want to understand what you mean by it. Well, non-material, and it's, it is something that's real, but it doesn't have the properties of material things, like being spatially locatable, like having mass, you can touch it. Uh, right, so, so these are all negative characteristics. Can you give me any positive characteristics? Yeah, what I'm feeling now, uh, my state of ecstatic happiness that I'm <laughs> in, um, that is, that is the... But, but, but what's causing that? I'm, I'm trying I, to, I mean, that's the phenomenological expression of it, granted. And it's partially your brain. Some people say it's all the brain. You say it's partially the brain. And, and, and there's something else this, that has a spiritual component. I want to know what that spiritual component is. Can you say anything more about it other than what it's not? I'm really puzzled by your question, Robert, because if you ask this about material things, you, you could press the same sort of question and yes. say, well, what is it that makes one thing cause another? What do you mean by causality? And, and what in the end do you mean by solidity? Doesn't it okay. all... Uh, uh, so you could ask the same questions. I don't think they're proper questions. Okay, no I'm going to try to find a proper question. Let me try to find one. So as I hear it, consciousness is spiritual, and I have a feeling now that I'm a bit hot, you have a feeling that you're totally ecstatic. It's different. We have different expressions of our consciousness. And both of our brains are helping in that. But if there's a spiritual component to consciousness, then we have a different kind of consciousness. And so now we've learned something that consciousness can split into parts, at least two parts, you and me. I don't know about these other people that when, around the world. I don't think there's one thing called consciousness which splits into parts. 
Uh, and if, so you have one and I have one, separate yeah, ones. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Well, this is progress. I have a separate piece. Okay. Uh, I have a separate something and you have a separate something. Well, if you ask what my consciousness now is, uh, then I'd say it consists of a, a finite visual field, which is elliptical in shape uh, and contains colored patches. Right? <laughs> I have thoughts which are framed in my mind, which I'm not going to tell you about, and then I've got some thoughts which come out of my mouth. Yeah. Then I've got some feelings that I have. So all these things are, are members of one consciousness. Now, the big philosophical question is, what makes these things parts of my consciousness, but not only are they not parts of your consciousness, you don't even know what's going on. Right, and in principle cannot. And in principle you cannot. There is no instrument you could use, not even an electroencephalogram, to find out what I... And, and no instrument even in principle. Not even in principle. That's right. what I'd say. So, Keith, what is it that we need to combine with the brain to make this non-material consciousness? Well, you need what Buddhists would uh, say is thoughts and feelings and sensations and perceptions. And this is a stream of, believe it or not, consciousness. And that is something which is at least partly produced by the brain. It's causally correlated with events right. in the brain, that is to say. But it also has its own psychical or spiritual or mental forms of causation. Uh, so. Right, let me give you one example. If I go through a mathematical uh, calculation, I don't know what's happening in my brain at all, and I don't believe that, that when I get a logically correct result, and I say, amazingly, 2 plus 2 does equal 4, I don't believe that that is produced by purely physical laws in the brain. It is, that is a logical calculation, and there are laws of thought which produce it, so that's what you need. So, Keith, do you need something like a soul to combine with the brain to make consciousness? That's a loaded word. Uh, I think the most important distinction I would make is between the laws of physics, which are um, uh, mechanical in the sense they're not directed, uh, they're not for the sake of anything, they're just proceeding in accordance with m uh, mathematical equations, etc. Okay, so they're, they're blind, they're not, they're not leading anywhere. To contrast the laws of physics with the laws of thought, which you use in mathematical calculations, for example, when you are aiming at a result, you've got some calculations and you want to get the correct result. You've got a criterion of correctness, you know, you're going to either right or wrong. Laws of physics aren't concerned with whether you're right or wrong. So that evaluative element, I'm right or wrong, and that logical process of thought that I'm going to do this because one thought leads to another and I don't care what's happening in my brain. Now, there must be some correlation between the brain and the laws of thought, but my point, and I think it's a very strong point, I have to say, uh, is that the, the laws of mathematical and logical uh, thinking are not reducible to or statable in terms of laws of physics or of any known science. And so there must at least be two completely different ways of understanding uh, what human beings are, a physical way and a way concerned with thinking and I would say feeling and perception as well. And these, you have to put these two together and I believe that nobody on earth knows how to do that. <laughs>